Hello, in this second part of the video we solve one more example um, and here in this example we're given the expression of the electric field uh, it's a function of x and t and z and it's in the y direction so this is another type of electric field that you can see in uh, electromagnetic applications um, this specific electric field you'll see it in something called waveguides Waveguides are hollow metallic tubes, so this is a metallic tube, it has a rectangular cross section, okay, uh, and it's used to guide, electromagnetic energy actually will travel inside it, it will be guided by this, by this waveguide, and use it in high power applications, like satellite applications, and, and so on, and uh, radar applications, and so on. Um, so if you try to see the field inside, you see the field is, is still traveling in the z direction. This is cosine omega t minus beta z, or it's it's not a cosine to sine, but still a sinusoidal function uh, omega t minus beta z. So the field is indeed traveling in the z direction. But if you try to take a cross section, a cross section of the field at any instant. So if I try to take a cross section here, okay. And if I freeze time and then I take a look at the field, I see something very interesting. I see the field would behave like um, a sinusoidal waveform. It's not constant. So you have this one here, sine 3x. Uh, so you can get maybe a profile like this. Let me just try to draw it for you. You can get a half sine profile. Okay. So the electric field is very strong in the middle of the, of the waveguide. And it is zero at the edges. Or you can get a profile which looks something like this maybe it's uh, it's it's two cycles two halves of a sign or you can get a field which is something like this and let me try to draw it here three halves of a sign okay so the field can have varying strengths in the cross section this is different from the field we had in the previous example in the previous in the, in the first example the electric field was just uh, e node this there was no variation of x so if you take a look at the field at any at any point in the cross section it would be the same value this is why the first one was called the plane wave while this one here is uh, is a typical field that can exist inside rectangular waveguides okay so uh, those of you who will continue to study advanced electromagnetics courses, you will know that this, this form here is very similar to the one that we get in waveguides. Now, pay attention that you have here only one component of the electric field, it's EY. And this EY is a function of X, T, and Z. X, T, and Z. Okay? And you'll see as a result of this, we're going to have two components of the magnetic field, not a single component. And all three components of the field, the one E component and the two H components travel together at the speed of light uh, in the direction of the wave propagation. So let's see how we can use Maxwell's equations to solve this problem. Here you are given E. Here you are given E. So uh, the easiest equation to, to, use, so to use is the one that has the time derivative of B relative to T. So I think the one that we should use here is uh, curl E is equal to minus partial B partial T. Okay, this is, this is Faraday's law in, in differential form. Uh, why this is easier to use? Because you are giving the electric field. You can find its curl, so it's, it's derivative relative to space, f to x and z, and then you integrate it in time to get b. But b is nothing but mu h, so you divide by mu, and then you have h. Okay, so I think this should be the plan when you get a question like this. If you are given e, you want to get h, then this is the, the, the curl e equation is the one to go. Okay, we start to solve this problem. We wrote the uh, equation we're going to be using in the solution. This is uh, the curl equation of E. Curl E is minus partial B partial T. And as we agreed earlier, this is nothing but Faraday's, Faraday's law in, in point form. Um, and because B is mu H, and no one said anything about mu, so I can assume mu to be mu naught. I still wrote it as mu here, but I know it's mu equal to mu naught. Uh, and it's a constant, does not change with time, so I can take it out from the differentiation. This becomes mu naught partial h partial t is equal to minus curl of e. And now I'm going to write the curl of e. The curl is, is the expansion of the, of, the, of the determinant ax, ey, z, partial, partial, x, partial, partial, y, partial, partial, z, 
zero, e y, and zero. Zero. Remember, we have only one component of the electric field. It's e y, but e but this e y is a function of x, z, and t. Okay. So now let's see how many components we are gonna get in the magnetic field. If you remove this column and this row, you get this term, which is zero minus partial e y partial z. E y is a function of z. So this term will be non-zero, okay? Now let's go here, remove column and, and row. This is going to give you zero. Now let's come here, remove column and row. You get the derivative of EY relative to x, but EY is also a function of x because it has the term sine 3x. So here, this is, this is what's going to come out of this uh, curl operator, a component in the x direction and a component in the z direction. I wrote, I brought for you here, our, I copied the expression of the electric field here so that we can carry out the differentiation. Um, when you differentiate relative to z, the sine becomes a cosine, okay, and you multiply by minus 2. But minus 2 will cancel with the minus here, then this becomes plus. So you have here plus 2 e naught, the, the, uh, the, uh, the sine became a cosine, sine 3x is untouched. Okay, so this become cosine omega t minus 2z. Let's talk about the second part. Partial ey partial x. This is ey. If you differentiate this one relative to x, you get 3 cosine 3x. Three, 3 cosine 3x. But the sine omega t minus 2z will not be touched. And this is what we have here. You get 3 e naught cosine 3x sine omega t minus 2z. And this in the z direction. So the magnetic field, it's a derivative relative to time, multiplying by mu naught, has two components. One component is in the x direction, one component in the z direction. Now, the next step is to integrate both components relative to time to be able to solve for h as a function of space and time. Okay, we carry out, we wrote here, I wrote it for you here one more time just to, just to be able to see how things are going to be integrated. Now, let's say integrate. This is a function of time. If you integrate a cosine, you get a sine, okay? So this becomes sine omega t minus 2z. And you have to divide by omega. So you multiply by omega. Sorry, you divide by omega. And the negative sign that was, I will start the bracket, was distributed inside. Okay. Now, let's integrate sine relative to sine omega t minus 2z relative to t. The integration of the sine is minus cosine. So this minus 3 becomes plus 3. And you have to divide by omega. Okay, the, the cosine term here, cosine 3x is not touched. The sine 3x term here is not touched. Now, one thing um, that I also I would like to, uh, to mention, um, so when I carry out these integrations, I should have added another term, which is plus, I maybe I can try to, uh, to type it in a different way here, plus hs, and the s is a static or here, if this is mu, there's plus ps. It's some, some constant vector, some static vector that does not change with time. But as I explained in the previous video, this static field must be equal to zero. Why? Because static fields do not travel in space. Okay? So if we are talking about a part of a space where there is an electromagnetic wave, then this is a traveling wave, this is a traveling wave, and the magnetic and the given electric field is a traveling wave. This is static. Okay, and that does not travel and is not coupled really to the other electric field because this is a static field. Static fields are not coupled to time varying electric fields. Okay, so we have now this is this is the these are the components. What we're gonna be doing are divide both sides by mu naught. Okay, and then now we'll have uh, minus two e naught over omega mu naught. We call this whole term h x naught. So this is the amplitude of the magnetic field in the x direction. If you divide both sides here by mu naught, you get 2 e naught over omega mu naught. 2 e naught, sorry, 3 e naught over omega mu naught. We call this term hz naught. It is the amplitude of the magnetic field in the z direction. So as you can see, one component of the electric field, because we are talking about a waveguide, it resulted in one component of the magnetic field in the x direction and one component is in the direction of, of wave propagation the wave travels in the direction of z okay and uh, indeed we have here 
and we have this component here which is still is also in the z direction so this component here is in the z direction okay so this is very interesting and this is uh, something that people who study waveguides will tell you that it could happen for some of the existing modes okay to, so to summarize we this is how things went we started with an electric field component in the y direction okay this is the one shown here this is ey okay and this EY gave us two magnetic field components, one of them negative X, the other one in the, in the direction of wave propagation. All three components are actually traveling in the direction of Z. Okay? Uh, notice if you take the cross product between E, which is in, in the Y direction, with a, H, which is in the negative X direction, this cross product will give you the direction of wave propagation again. Okay, e -Y, a y cross minus a x gives you a z. Okay, so this wave, as again, as I said, this expression that I've shown you can exist inside uh, a waveguide. And one of the MATLAB files I I I share with you on Avenue is called waveguide.m. It's a MATLAB file. I encourage you to open it and to uh, play with the parameter m, the one that describes how many cycles in the sine. So uh, you, have, uh, you have sine mx, okay? This, is, this, is, this describes a wave in the, in the cross section. So you can make m1 or two or three or four and try to see an animation of how the wave is traveling inside that wave guide. Okay, it's very interesting to see, uh, to try to get some um, uh, deeper insight into, into the propagation of these waves inside uh, waveguides.